So welcome back to my channel, this is Dom and an update on some of my more recent painting projects. Um, now I don't want you to think that I only do 15mm, um, obviously I don't. I have also been continuing down my various 28mm projects in the last few days. Um, first up, this is one of my Russian uh, heavy artillery guns uh, from the Napoleonic period. Uh, I had previously done two um and then realized that actually in black powder at least if you want to play russian guns the way they really should be played you need to use them as a, a bigger battery a large battery which is actually three models um so um i quickly i already had i have a number of unpainted russian guns so i thought i'd do two more up or do one do this one up and i've got a horse gun that i'm working on at the moment as well um so i wanted it to match the previous ones i'd done um so put them with the gabions uh which are renedra gabions i think with a little bit of um soil or sort of uh, dusty stuff put on top just to make them look a little bit more realistic um and while i was there i just also touched up the previous ones that i'd done uh, because I wasn't entirely happy with them. So now, let me pull away a bit. You can see I have a full Russian large battery. And they look like, you know, they all belong together. Uh, the tufts are a bit different on the one in the middle, which is the new one. But other than that, the figures are a bit better. I re went back in and touched the others up. Um, matched the green, um, because again, I wasn't terribly happy with the previous green. I wasn't happy with the skin tone. I basically wasn't happy with the previous ones. So um, they had a good sort of rework. So they look consistent and um, they're not perfect. But um, for me, they'll do nicely. And now I have a Russian large Napoleonic battery for when I play my uh, black powder games. It's all good. Psst, don't tell anyone. But I've been working on some French. Not only some French. But the big man himself. Yeah, well, I need a target for my 95th, don't I? And that's my rationale for this. So uh, this is, well, the uh, Napoleon figure is a special figure from uh, War Games Foundry. I bought during their Christmas sale um, because they were very reasonable. And then if you bought, uh, bought a lot of figures, which actually I did, um, and I thought I haven't actually got that many French generals in my uh, my armies that I built up to fight against the true British um, and allied forces. Um, so um, I thought I'd pick this one up because I really liked it. It's, um, it's based on a famous painting of um, Napoleon, I think at Marengo. I could be wrong. Um, but it's a really nice little model and even at my sort of average painting standards I was quite pleased with how I managed to pull this one together. Uh, this is a, an ADC from I believe it was front rank um, but I could be wrong but um, I thought it put him on the base with Napoleon and then the two at the back here are um, they are actually 3D prints that I picked up in a Kickstarter a while ago um, which had a whole load of ADCs, uh, dismounted ADCs, and I've just sort of got a couple left, and I thought I'd put them on the base here. Um, and yeah, quite pleased with the effect. So there you go, don't tell anyone, I've done some French. So uh, something different for me, I haven't done any uh, English Civil War for a while. Um, this uh, it basically shows everything about me as a gamer uh, and as a painter. I have to have that target in mind, really, is the ideal way. If I've got an objective of a game or a um some rule set that i want to get ready for um that's what spurs me on to do it and in this case um i'm doing a um a, a game at crack con our convention our uh, plastic crack uh, sort of meetup convention uh in derby in october um miller from miller's miniatures um it <laughs> wrote me into helping you out run a when an english civil war game um, so I'm taking the Royalist side and he's taking the Parliamentarian side. Incidentally, if you want to take part in that and you're a member of the Facebook page and you're coming to CrackCon, put your name down. Um, I mean, you'll have to be on the losing side because you have to be on the Parliamentarian side because the Royalist side is full, but there's still places on the Parliamentary side. Anyway, 
by the by, it's not an advert for Crackcon. Um, so I've had quite a few ECW figures. I've already painted quite a lot of ECW figures. I don't really need much more. Um, but given that Crackcon's coming, I thought, and I don't even know whether I'm going to need to bring my own figures along for it because we're going to let the players decide whether, what they want to bring. But I had these unpainted plastics and metals and I thought, right, I'm going to crack on and get some of them done. So um, this is uh, Francis Cook, very apt, uh, given my surname, his uh, pike unit. Um, now, according to the records, they predominantly white, as it was described, but very much a paler colour um, uniform. There are no real uniforms in this era, just sort of uh, the, the Lord... Uh, who raised the regiments or the officer who raised the regiments tended to sort of give a uh, if he was wealthy enough sort of a some cloth to them to sort of form their to build their or to make their clothes out of but obviously over campaign um things got worn out got replaced blah 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 so there was never really a proper uniformity but i took this sort of ethos of being pale or white and uh, used a range of sort of creams and tans and of course whites um, as well as some slightly darker colours on these uh, pikemen um, and I quite like the effect um, they are mainly, these ones are mainly metal there's a couple of plastics in there but they're basically uh, mainly metals and I think they are um, I think, I don't, can't remember where I got them from I've, I mean they, these literally have been sitting in a box for a long long time for about four years um, so I took them out, dusted them down and they're good to go and I'm quite pleased with the effect. So every pipe block needs some wings of ar uh, wings of archers, wings of muskets. Um, so Pike and Shot is what we're, we're planning to play ECW. That's the main rule set that I've used for ECW. It has its limitations, but it plays a reasonably good game. And in that you have pipe blocks of 16 and then two wings of um, 12 muskets. So that forms a a regiment, battalion, whatever you want to call it, of, of pike and shot. Um, so these are the musketeers for uh, that uh, Cook's regiment of pike. Um, so these will form up each side of them. Um, and uh, again, I've kept to the same sort of uh, off-white, white effect, so that they have that sort of feel that they're, there's a certain degree of uniformity, even though they didn't really have uniforms. So again, most of these, actually no, probably about half of these are plastic, half of these are metals. Um, Rene, a Renegade, that's it, I think it was Renegade figures uh, that I managed to pick up from somebody some time ago selling. Um, so I uh, mixed them all in, they're going pretty well actually. Um, the Waller ones are showing their age, if I'm honest. Uh, the plastic kits are not the very best. Um, and the dude on the end here, swinging out of his bottle, is actually a bloody miniatures, <laughs> a miniature. I thought uh, I'd put him in just for the sheer heck of it. So there you go. That's uh, one regiment of pike and shot. I'm going to do another one, uh, probably a gun and an officer and some commanded shot. And I have actually still got some cavalry kicking around. So at some point I'll get around to doing all of that um, before uh, crack on. So, oh, no, 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 no. I haven't ignored my responsibilities to 15 mil. Uh, I have continued to work on uh, my German 15mm uh, collection for um, uh, O-Grip and uh, these are four half tracks that I picked up, uh, well they were part of that um, German battle group formation that I, uh, that I showed I think um, and I've just been working my way through them slowly but surely, uh, nice little models to put together actually, really good fun. Um, I've just noticed a couple of the transfers have not stuck down despite being varnished and everything else So I'm gonna have to get the old soul stuff on them again. Anyway um, Yeah, they're the battle group miniatures. They're plastic um, They're based so they're all beautiful um, Really happy with how they've come out. I've again. I've just used the same sort of stippling effect. I used with the um, uh, armor fighting vehicles um, using a sort of just a, an old stubby brush and just sort of putting it on much like I would imagine the troopers in in the war themselves would have used um, you know mops and things to and brushes to apply uh, the camo in the field using the base of the Donkel Gelt 
these are obviously late uh, war vehicles. Um, my plan is actually to get a few more that I can do as early war, just in the normal sort of grey uh, that you see. Um, but um, yeah, nice little models, really pleased with them. Apart from those damn transfers, they're, they're fiddly. They really these fiddly uh, these um, battlefront um, plastic uh, sort of um, transfers. That they, they sort of have a plastic coating on them, and they really are awkward to get. I find them awkward to get on. Anyway, uh, maybe it's just my clumsy fingers, but uh, yeah, you can see here they've lifted there and there. I'll have to get something on them. Anyway. By the by, you always see these things when you put them under a strong light and do a, a video. <laughs> but they're nice vehicles nonetheless. And uh, they can join the uh, the Weimar troops that I have for the late war period. So I don't think these models need any introduction at all. These are the fearsome German 88 anti-aircraft stroke anti-tank guns. Um, basically this is uh, the Battlefront uh, Flames of War uh, 88 battery pack you get four guns in it now there's no way I, I mean I may not even use one gun <laughs> in no group because they're pretty damn powerful um, but um, I picked up the box quite cheaply on eBay and I thought right I'm gonna do them because they're iconic right and um, they are really really nice models to put together dead simple if anybody's tried to put together the 28 mil warlord ones you'll know yeah, not quite the same story. Um, these were a joy to put together, actually. Very simple indeed. Um, so I don't, because I don't need four, I thought I'd do two as late war, or mid to late war, and two early to mid war. And then, because uh, I'm going to have both armies in my German collection, so I'm going to have a, um early to mid war and a, and a mid to late war. Um, so yeah, these all form part of those. Uh, the grey ones obviously are the early wars and the camoed ones are the later war. I've followed the same convention with the camo as I did with uh, my vehicles. And basically just working on the assumption you read about it and they use mops and brushes and rags to put the to apply the um, camo. Uh, it was usually dunkel girl under, underneath and then uh, sort of green and browns on top. Um, and that's what I've done effectively with a um, manky old brush and just sort of dabbed it on the uh, on on the on the models in a sort of random but camo like pattern and I quite like the effect. So there you go, that's them done. Uh, so next up, this is a unit of Bill and Bo uh, for my uh, burgeoning uh, War of the Roses uh, factions. So I showed a few weeks ago now the uh, start of uh, a retinue for Lord Lovell. Uh, and um, I, I just, I don't know why, just it was a faction that caught my eye. Um, he was the true loyalist uh, Richard, Richard III follower. Um, and I just thought I'd carry on painting up a retinue. So I'd already done his command stand and uh, Bill and Bow. So I've added another Bill and Bow here. Uh, this is almost entirely metal figures. Um, they are uh, foundry, I believe. A couple of the ones in the front here, or in the, on the on the bill stand, are actually extremely old figures that I found in a cardboard box um, when I was clearing out the garage, moving everything into the uh, boot room here. And um, they were ones I think I'd used from sort of D and D days back when I was very young. Um, but they were absolutely fine. I just uh, chopped them off their slotter bases and uh, put re uh, repainted them. And Bob's your auntie. So uh, there you go. That's. Uh, sort of recycled um, Bill and Bone. And so to finish off Lovell's faction, uh, here is his unit of men at arms. Um, they are uh, again using the same sort of green, uh, sorry, uh, yellow and blue. Um, I've attempted to put a couple of their sort of, he has a, his emblem is a, a white warhound, um, which for mine looks more like a sort of angry dinosaur when I paint him on but a couple of them I've had a go at uh, just to you know for the effort more than anything else uh, the the two wings are both uh, made of plastic uh, Perry fin miniatures the guys in the middle are all foundries um, or foundry metals well, apart from that guy I think he's plastic as well uh, but anyway a nice mixture and it just shows they all mix in pretty well um, and I think that'll be all I'll do for Lovell. He's now got two Bill and Bow, 
uh, his command base and some men at arms. I think that's probably enough for him. Um, and we may move on and do some Richard the Third figures next, um, just to sort of round out that uh, that faction. I've still got lots and lots of um, Perry plastics and a few uh, foundry metals to mix in with them. Um, so um, I might as well paint them up and get them done. So um, so if I really want to, I can play some quite big uh, solo games. So there you go. So that's what I've been working on for the last few weeks. Um, mixed bag as always, continuing with the O Group stuff because I'm really enjoying that. Um, and the War of the Roses just because um, I want to get... Um, just I enjoy painting them to be honest. They're really good fun. Really nice figures to paint. Uh, fairly simple actually. And um, obviously now being a bit sidetracked with the ECW figures. But again, good to get them out, the, uh, out of the box out of the pile of opportunity and get them uh, into the painting queue. Uh, quite enjoyed um, just clearing some figures really. So I uh, found a whole load of figures I didn't know I had. Um, well, I did know I had, but I'd forgotten about them if you see what I mean. Um, so it's nice to um, dust them out and, and get them painted up. So um, I'll show those in coming weeks as I paint them out. So um, there you go. Anyway, I hope your projects are going well. hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're getting some gaming in and staying cool in this, well, at least in the UK and Europe, amazingly hot weather. Um, it has been sweltering in the uh, in the boot room, I have to say. Um, but um, thank goodness for fans and aircon, that's all I can say. Anyway, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.